So you are what's called an activist investor, not a macro investor. An activist investor typically invests in companies or makes spe specific bets on companies, the direction up or down and so forth. How did you get into being an activist investor as opposed to, let's say, a value investor, a macro investor? Was it something you decided to do while you were in college or early in your professional career? What led you into that route? I, I think it's part of my personality. You know, I, I started as an investor. I raised the first pool of capital when I was 26. Uh, and I made an early investment in a company called Rockefeller Center Properties. And I saw management making a series of decisions that made no sense to me. And it was just so obvious the right thing to do as to how to create value. And it was being a frustrated passive investor that made me into an active investor. And, you know, that investment turned into a very profitable and very high profile investment. And with success, uh, you know, one is motivated to, to try it again. And uh, it's been helpful to the strategy over a very long period of time. And it's fun. And uh, if you're passive, you can feel like the market's patsy. And if you're active, you can actually create some value. And I think it's a lot more interesting than just picking securities. You know, we, we bought a stake in Chipotle at a time where the company was struggling a few years ago. We put a few directors on the board. We recruited a new CEO named Brian Nickel. It's completely turned around the company. The stock has, you know, almost tripled in, in the midst of a crisis. Uh, and it just tells you that, you know, that's a lot more fun and it's a lot more profitable. And it's, I would say that good for, a lot more good for America than just simply being a passive stock picker. So let's talk about for a moment, um, some of the campaigns you've done as activists, some of them have worked out, some have not. Uh, Chipotle has seemed to have worked out, but you did a couple that were difficult ones, or Herbalife or Valiant. Uh, they didn't work out. What would you say is the mistake you made in hindsight and that you would try to avoid in the future? Sure, so there's sort of eight principles that have driven our investment success. And when we have veered from those eight principles, uh, we've lost money. And uh, after the uh, 2000, we went through a very difficult period circa 2015, 2016, the two investments you mentioned were big drivers of that. It was, a, you know, if you will, experiences making mistakes and learning from them. And it was a moment of reflection for the firm. And I went back to the core principles that have driven our success for the first 12 years. And I had a member of the investment team literally engrave them in a stone tablet, not dissimilar from Moses' Ten Commandments. And I had that stone tablet put in a, what you might call a deal toy, it sits on everyone's desk in the office. And uh, we've adhered to those principles, you know, ever since. And you know, we've been fortunate uh, to return to you know, the success we had for the first uh, dozen years. So I think it's about keeping to you know, our, our principles are basically: we want to invest in simple, predictable, free cash flow generative, dominant companies with large barriers to entry that are in high returns on capital that have limited exposure to extrinsic risk we can't control, strong balance sheets, don't need access to capital to survive, have excellent management, good governance. Sounds logical. Um, but, you know, occasionally we've diverged and there's uh, those times, you know, there's a certain discipline that comes with investments and there always seems to be a countervailing quality that caused us to diverge. Uh, but in really each case where we've compromised on business quality or complexity, we've been harmed uh, from an investment standpoint.